Hi everyone, I am Francesco Suman, science journalist, and today I am here with uh, Maurizio Corbetta, full professor of neurology at the University of Padua and uh, director of the neurological clinic at the Azienda Ospedaliera in Padua. Professor Corbetta uh, is also one of the uh, principal investigators in a research project that addresses one of the most critical issues in uh, clinical neurosciences, which is the rehabilitation after a neurological damage caused, for example, by a stroke or other pathologies. This research project, which Professor Corbetta leads along uh, researchers from other institutions from Milan and Barcelona, was awarded an ERC Synergy Grant in 2022. So many congratulations, Professor, for this very outstanding result. Thank you. Um, first of all, I would like to uh, ask you to tell us something about how you arrived in Padua. I think it was 2016, and before that you were in the United States. So why did you choose uh, to come to Padua in the first place? Well, um, I guess I'm uh, one of the few uh, returning brains, I guess. There are many you know, brains that are escaping Italy. I'm one of the few that is returning. Uh, I was in the U.S. I'd been in the U.S. for 30 years. I, I went there as a as a fellow, and then uh, after doing four years of research, <clears throat> I you know I decided to do another residency to be able to be a neurologist, a practicing neurologist, and then uh, you know I moved up to to the ranks, assistant, associate, full chair. And, uh, you know, I've been in the U.S. for many years. I was comfortable. I had a nice job and nice life. But then at some point, there is this something called the homing gene, which kicks on, kicks in at some point in your life. And I've been thinking about the idea to maybe come back to Italy and contribute to Italy a little bit. And, um, and open up this, op this opportunity in Padova uh, for a chair in neurology. And uh, in, in the Italian system, most people are promoted from the inside. Very rarely people are actually recruited from the outside. And so this was a unique opportunity to try to come back to Italy and do something here. Um, I think that among the uh, um, duties, let's say, that you were asked to perform in uh, in, in Padua there was the um, the Padua Neuroscience Center, of which you are also founding director. It is a very interdisciplinary center studying neurosciences. So uh, um, both this initiative and the research line that eventually was uh, founded by the RC Commission with the Synergy Grant, I think they were considered uh, strategic priorities in a way for the University of Padua. So I think uh, we can say that you had a pretty long to-do list when you decided to move back to Padua, right? What, was it this part of your decision to, to come back, all these initiatives? Uh, um, uh, was... Professor Rizzuto, uh, and before him was Professor Zaccaria. Um, and so with them, uh, I think uh, since the beginning, I mean, I proposed to develop a, a center for studying the brain. In Padua, there is a long tradition of anatomy, physiology, uh, molecular biology, but systems neuroscience, which is what I do, which is studying the brain as a whole, um, it was kind of uh, divided among different departments. There was psychology, there was anatomy, uh, there was biomedical sciences, neuroscience, engineering, physics. And so I came up with, you know, we came up together with this idea of founding a center and a center of Ateneo, which is one of the few inter interdepartmental centers. This is a real university center uh, dedicated to systems neuroscience. And so we came up with these concepts of five platforms, one for methods, uh, cognitive neuroscience, clinical neuroscience, circuits, and computational neuroscience. And so the center was founded virtually first, and then we had the university supported it, funded with some money. Uh, we came up with this system of uh, the gold card, uh, the silver and the bronze card for the department. If the department wanted to join, they had to, the gold card was a chip to enter into the center. Uh, there were some center that entered with the gold level, some center enter, some department enter with the bronze level. And now we had seven departments that supported the funding of the center. So this was a unique operation in Padova to get seven departments to work together towards the center. And the university was very supportive to get that done. 
And then they also found some space, small amount of space. Now we're moving in about a year. We're moving into a bigger space, which is going to be really a physical location where all these people from different departments will be together. And in 2018, we came up also with this idea to do a school, a PhD, a new PhD program in neuroscience. That was also kind of a battle because in Padua, there are 32 PhD schools. And of course, if you do a new one, the other ones have to make space for you. And uh, and so they were, you know, everybody was very collaborative and tried to make it happen. And so we started with four positions funded by the university. And now we have close to 14 positions a year funded through grants and private enterprises and companies and foundation and the university. Professor Vallesi, who took over the leadership, was a director. And, and, you know, and we established this very, very good collaboration with all the departments. So now I step down. Professor uh, Bertoldo, Alessandra Bertoldo from the day from the Department of Engineering. She's now the new director. And so this is kind of moving along nicely. And this is a new structural thing that was not there before. And so I'm very proud of it, actually, to be able to do that. Now, um, let's say the one million million dollar question, but maybe uh, even more worthy than that. How do you compete for an ERC synergy grant? Uh, I mean, uh, how does it differ from other European funding schemes? And uh, what kind of challenges does it present? Uh, how do you face them? And of course, what uh, kind of impact does it have uh, once you get it on a researcher's career? Okay, so I mean, for 30 years, I, you know, I supported myself in the States, there is this great system, which, you know, for the investigator, not so great, where you pay 80% of your salary on grants, the university takes 50 or 60% of every dollar that you bring in from the NIH. And so I lived my life and my lab life and my family life supporting myself on grants uh, for 30 years. And so I'm you know, I have a lot of experience in doing grants, but those are individual grants. These are all R01, so-called R01 individually funded investigators, because that's how the NIH is set up. They got some program projects where you have multiple investigators coming together, but those are very rare. And even rarer are center grants where you have a whole center coming together to do to do science. In Europe, there is this model instead of having this consortia where you have multiple university collaborating, but most of the time, everybody does his own things. You come together for the grant to get the money, and then rarely you get that kind of... And so this synergy, uh, I mean, it really happened because we had four investigators. They were all looking at the same thing. They had been collaborating before, and everybody got to a point where you need the other one to be able to move along. So we had done work in imaging, we had established certain principles. Uh, I'd work with Gustavo Deco, who's a physicist in Barcelona. We've been working together for 10 years. Marcello in Milan had worked with Mavi in Barcelona together for another 10 years. And now the two of us needed the other two. And so we came together and we became friends and we start talking about this grant for about a year, even before we brought it. And then, uh, you know, we had, we had to submit it twice. We ended up at the first non-funded grant the first time around. We were on the waiting list and they, they didn't give us the grant the first time. And so we resubmitted it again. And this time, you know, we got scored very highly and we got the grant. So, but the point is, uh, there are really four pillars and they are all intersecting. And I think that's the key of the Synergy Grant. It cannot be just done by pretending that you're interacting, you really need to interact. And I think uh, I don't have skills that Massimini in Milan has. I don't have skills that Deco in Barcelona have. I had never done any more research in, on mice, but now we're setting up an animal lab in Padova to work with Mavi in Barcelona to do research together. So I'm actually starting to do something that I never done before for the Synergy Brain. So I, it's kind of really exciting. Yeah, so the exchange of expertise is key to this kind of grant. Uh, and I understand it. And ideas is very important. Yeah. And Absolutely. what what are your expectations for the near future regarding this grant? Well, I mean, it's uh, you know, this grant in one of the you know, good, the good thing about Europe is that they force you to work together. 
the bad thing about Europe is that these grants are um, a bit, little bit uh, what they call the American a shoot in the sky, right? I mean, you're shooting for the moon. You have, the, you have to have these very revolutionary concepts to get the money. And um, and so, you know, we are proposing something that is very innovative, uh, technologically very uh, challenging. Uh, but, you know, it's, you know, it's like going to the moon. I mean, you say, okay, I want to go there. I mean, it's important. The steps is the travel that matters, right? Are you going to get to the moon? We don't know. But um, are we going to cure, you know, post-stroke deficits? We'll see. But I think uh, in the process, we're going to learn a lot. And I think that's what's important in science, that uh, it's not just the final product, but also the, the path. I mean, it's getting there and learning new things. And I think that's kind of what we we plan to do. We'll see where we get. We have six years and uh, you know we're planning a lot of activities. We're planning a movie, a documentary, where we're going to kind of uh, try to tell the story of how this grant came together and tell the story of how we're going to do it. We're going to have cameras in every lab and try to make a documentary after six years. Maybe we're going to you know, go to Venice Festival with a documentary. We'll see. <laughs> that would be absolutely amazing. And uh, what I can do is wish you the best with your, with your work and with your grants and with your work with your colleagues. And congratulations again for, for your job. If I, if I may give a suggestion to someone that wants to do this RRC grant, I think it's important the last two weeks to spend it together. We locked ourselves in an hotel for about a week and we kind of really prepared this interview very, very intensely. Uh, living together, eating together, talking science 24 hours a day. I think that was key to get the grant. I think that community together, like... So I think if one wants to do that, that would be my only suggestion on how to get the grant. Thank you for this precious tip. I'm sure it will be very useful. And uh, again, uh, congratulations and thank you. Okay, thank you very much for the interview. Thank you.